Well, OpenAI just dropped a pretty major bombshell at their spring update event. Speculation had been building over the preceding days, with some theorizing that we'd see anything from a ChatGPT5 release to a search engine. But the resounding prediction was that we'd see something like a real-life version of her. The Scarlett Johansson voiced AI assistant from the 2013 Spike Jones film. And what we got might just be that, along with some other surprises. The biggest of which is the fact that ChatGPT, the new model, is free for everyone. There is an asterisk there, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But first, let's go check out all of the fanfare from today's live event. First off, did they actually release Samantha from her? Well, kind of. At least it's the closest we've seen yet. For sure, the new voice assistant is miles ahead of the previous version, which tended to be very verbose and not very conversational. By comparison, let's check out the new model. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? Hey, so I'm on stage right now. I'm doing a live demo. And frankly, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Can you help me calm my nerves a little bit? Oh, you're doing a live demo right now? That's awesome. So that's super impressive, especially given the response time. It very much does sound like the version of Siri that we have always been promised. But what really blew me away was when OpenAI demonstrated that the voice assistant can not only sound natural, but actually emotional as well. So my friend uh, Barrett here, he's been having trouble sleeping lately. And uh, I want you to tell him a bedtime story about robots and love. Oh, a bedtime story about robots and love? I got you covered. Gather round, Barrett. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Bite. But I want a little bit more emotion in your voice, a little bit more drama. Got it. Let's add some drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named no, Bite. No, 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 ChatGPT. I really want maximal emotion, like maximal expressiveness, much more than you were doing before. Understood. Let's amplify the drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours. So yes, given the fact that the model can now mimic emotions, that totally means AI girlfriends are going to be coming on pretty strong. Uh, I would like to point out that during the demo, you noticed that you could actually interrupt the model as well. That was something you could not do in the previous version. It would just kind of continuously spout on with its answer. Although I will point out that, you know, in the demo was essentially two dudes interrupting a female voice. So, you know, AI or not, I guess mansplaining will always be a thing. Not only can the new model mimic emotions, but apparently it can also detect emotions as well, as we see in this part of the demo. Hey there, what's up? How can I brighten your day today? Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna show you um, a selfie of what I look like, and then I'd like you to try to see what emotions I'm feeling based on how I'm looking. Sounds like a fun challenge. Go ahead and show me that selfie, and I'll put my emotional detective hat on. Okay, so here's me. So what kind of emotions do you think I'm feeling? It seems like I'm looking at a picture of a wooden surface. Oh, you know what? Um, that what? was the thing I sent you before. Don't worry, I'm not actually a table. Um, okay, so, so take, take another look. Ah, uh, that makes more sense. Um, there we go. It looks like you're feeling pretty happy and cheerful, with a big smile and maybe even a touch of excitement. Whatever's going on, it seems like you're in a great mood. So I think that the table hiccup actually occurred because the camera was forward facing initially. As you can see up here, uh, ChatGPT initially recognized the table. Uh, you know, I totally let things slide on this one. And actually, if anything, I think that a hiccup like this proves that this was running in real time. Apparently, one of the reasons that the model is able to respond so quickly now, at least in terms of speech, is because it's now working with end-to-end -end speech to speech. In other words, it's actually listening to the speech as opposed to transcribing it and then answering it. That was illustrated in this example where ChatGPT was able to offer advice on calming breaths. Breathing in and breathe out. <sighs> That's it. How do you feel? I feel a lot better. OpenAI also announced a new desktop app. There's a bit of an asterisk there, but this will allow you to use ChatGPT no longer tethered to the website. And when you add in the vision capabilities, well, that's a pretty big deal because now essentially you can screen share with ChatGPT. As Igor from AI Advantage pointed out during our AI community live stream where we were watching the event, the previous vision model was more like, you know, two frames a second. So it was really just kind of looking at, you know, essentially screenshots, whereas this new version is essentially watching live video. And as we were chatting, I think it kind of dawned on all of us exactly how many personalized use cases this is going to allow for. 
everything from real-time tutoring for students to something that I was thinking about where I might be able to screen share my video editing software and have ChatGPT essentially act as like an assistant editor. Now, as it currently stands, the desktop app is only going to be available for Mac, at least initially. It will roll out with a Windows version fairly soon. Benchmarks on the new 4.0 model are obviously very impressive. It clearly beats every other model, you know, some by a large margin, some by a little. That said, I'm always a little bit wary of these benchmark graphs as, you know, obviously any data can be fluffed a little bit. But more interesting to me was the fact that the token costs have dropped on multilingual languages, which does lead us to the demonstration of using ChatGPT as a babblefish or a universal translator, depending on, you know, your flavor of sci-fi. And uh, every time you hear English, I want you to translate it to Italian. And if you hear Italian, I want you to translate it back to English. Is that good? Perfetto. <laughs> Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare, cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci, come risolviamo le equazioni? I do leave it up to the Italian speakers in the audience to let me know if that sounded correct or not. Now, there were definitely some more interesting things that were not mentioned in the stream, but you can find over on the OpenAI website. Uh, the new model is capable of doing a lot more than what we saw. For example, in terms of generating text, it is probably the best I have seen yet. Sure, it still has a few problems, like this words up here turns into like sort of words. Uh, but I, I mean, overall, the amount of you know words that it got correct in terms of this handwriting vastly outweighs any other text to image model we have seen yet. Super wild is the fact that it can generate 3D objects as well. I mean, that's actually kind of crazy. It also does lecture summarizations as well, or, you know, probably beating summarizations, which isn't necessarily new, but, you know, is just once again, OpenAI killing like a hundred startups. And going back to the text side of things, yes, apparently we can now just create fonts within ChatGPT. And as for pricing, yes, this model is absolutely free, which does beg the question, why pay for plus at this point? Well, apparently you'll have five times the amount of requests to the new model, and obviously you'll be prioritized during periods of heavy use. Additionally, during those times, free users will be kicked down to ChatGPT 3.5, which at this point I think is going to feel super underwhelming. And I'm sure there is a lot more coming. For example, there wasn't anything mentioned today about the upcoming deal between Apple and OpenAI. Granted, that deal hasn't been finalized or publicly finalized as of this recording. Uh, that said, I actually did expect the big announcement to be today. So perhaps we'll hear more about that from the Apple side of things when WWDC happens on June 10th. There were also reports that the new 4.0 model would have phone capabilities, but again, that might be something that we hear about at the Apple event when I think all signs are sort of pointing to ChatGPT becoming the new Siri. Lastly, if you wanted to check out the entire presentation, you might want to check out the AI community live stream, uh, which I did with Igor from AI Advantage and Matt Vitt Pro, and you know, but you could just like hanging out with us and watching our reactions in real time. And I guess next up, we'll see what Google's answer to all of this is at Google I.O. tomorrow, or, you know, if Google even knows what the question is. I guess we'll find out in 24 hours. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.